Hello everyone and welcome one week more to our, our weekly render break. So we had a plenty of, 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 of news, a, a, a week plenty of news, so let's just start right away. So for starters we have a new interesting tutorial series by Ming Lan Allen Cho. Ming Lan Ming Lun Allen Cho. So he or she, I, I don't know if she's a girl or he's a guy, I, I'm not sure, but he's doing a series of, of written articles with illustrations that to explain and learn how physics, math and programming works in video games. It's pretty interesting. For example, we have one article here. So I recommend you to visit its, uh, his website and I will link it in the video description. It's very, very interesting. <laughs> also, you can give support to Ming Lun Allen Cho via his Patreon. Next, Scatter 2 for SketchUp. So, Scatter 2, uh, well, uh, Lindale, creators of Scatter for SketchUp, started a crowdfunding campaign to fund Scatter 2. The plugin is already under development, and the target of the campaign is to fund the development of some new features, like 3D paint masks, bitmap masks, new projection modes, custom falloff curves, volumetric scattering, level of details, lookouts, and more things. So right now the campaign, as you can see here, is 92% uh, uh, funded, and their goal is uh, $1,800, or euros, sorry, euros. So I will put the link in the video description in case you are interested to support this plugin. Next, if you're a ZBrush user, you may be interested in ZBrush's new development. Pixelogic has uploaded a video to YouTube where it goes through the new developments for, three, for ZBrush. New features include the ability to fade textures, new extractor tools, stream updates, curve, uh, curve deck of rows, curve, curve deck of brass, I'm not sure what it is, and draw draft analysis and more. So you can see here like a list in the video. I will put the link in the video description too. And next, if you want to take a peek on what are the new features coming to Blender 2.81, Blender.org has made a public page where it shows some of the new features in 2.81. New features include an open VDB voxel based remesher, implementation of Intel Open Image Denoise, several EV optimization improvements like support for holdout mask objects to make mascaras, ma masks of objects, Several sculpt improvements, like several, not, not just, I, I think all the improvements are not here because there are a lot of improvements. So several, like a lot of sculpt improvements and many other things. Also, they included some examples of the new particle system that is currently in development and a link to the weekly live streams done by Pablo Vasquez in both Spanish and English with the latest uh, weekly news for Blender. I will put the link in the video description and if you want to support the project you can go to um, I think it was thefund.blender.org uh, No, it, it was not that but you can support Blender in the Blender Development Fund In donate? Possibly, yeah, yeah, Blender Development Fund Here it is So you can support Blender via the Blender Development Fund Next Foundry released Nuke 12.0 and also Nuke X 12.0 and also Nuke X Studio 12.0. So first things first, pricing changes. Nuke price and Nuke X and Nuke Studio price has been raised at five percent since the last since the last year. So yes, it's it's five percent five percent expense more expensive because it was so cheap they had to to rise the prices right because nuke is super cheap so it's super affordable so now nuke it's priced at four thousand seven hundred fifty fifty eight dollars nuke x eight thousand eight hundred fifty three dollars nuke studio and ten thousand two hundred forty eight dollars and it has several rental options also, it's available for Windows 7 and 10. It seems that Windows 8, Windows 8 is not supported. I don't know. Maybe it's Windows 7 to 10. CentOS 7.4 Plus and OS X 
tell uh, 10.13 plus. Now the new features. They have a new in-paint node, similar to the healing brass in Photoshop, but can be animated. New edge extension options for kit run rotoscope footage. Self-selection in 3D viewport, support for open color IO rolls, updated to deep uh, updates to deep compositing. I don't know if we can see in paint node. Uh, there's not much about deep compositing here, it seems. But they have updated the deep compositing uh, workflow. And general performance improvements like UI, UI draw performance, new script execution performance, and this is not official, but it seems that they improved the execution performance like 1000% of something similar to that. So it, it's like, it seems to be crazy, the, the improvement. They also improved the reading of, a, a, of EXR files when using planar compression algorithm, like the PZIP or something like that, I don't remember the name, and more things. They have updated also the key open source libraries. Now, there are some specific features to new kex, like the new 360 degrees compositing nodes for Cara, from CaraVR, new grip warp tracking that provides fine control when tracking organic objects, and that's it. And now the new studio and here specific features are that both received improved play black playback performance when playing high res footage optimized for multi-channel exr and open color EO workflows hi david, uh, david hi ggl sex okay with uh, pricing like that i think i'll get a couple more licenses just in case yeah i think so that i think so too i have to to get some licenses i'm lucky we don't use nuke or any other Foundry software. I'm sorry. Next, next news is M3D. M3D model viewer. M3D apps up, up, adds options to show models in AR. The app can be downloaded for free in both Play Store and App Store, so for Android and iOS. Fine, thank you, David. David. Now it's able to show models in AR, even complex texture models at 60 frames per second. It support formats like 3DS, Colada, FVX, OBJ, PLY, STL, and now it also supports GLTF with animation. Now there is a web version of the app, and they created some cloud, ser uh, cloud services, uh, starting from a free plan that gives 100 megabytes of storage for the user and restricts uploads to files under 50 megabytes. Then they have the pro plan for 7 euros a month and the premium plan for 35 euros a month. If you want to check the plans, you can go here and, oh, it seems it's 25 euros, not 35 euros. And you can compare what are the different uh, leverages, the, the different advantages you get with each plan. Next, there is a new, oh no, I don't have the video for that. Well, I, I don't need the video. There is a new Photoshop content aware sneak peek. I will put the link in the video description because I don't know why I don't have the video here. But there is a new content aware sneak peek for Photoshop. It basically adds more options for the user to choose from where to take the samples. And it also has a new auto options that analyzes the image. I will put the link to the video in the video description. Next, Kissot 9 has been unveiled. So, first of all, if you purchase it, Kissot 8 between October 1, October 1st, October 1st, uh, October 1st, of October 1st and October 1st, uh? yeah, okay. Between October 1st, 2019 and the Kison 9 release date, which is not unveiled yet, you will receive the upgrade for free. For other users, this will be a paid upgrade. Especially if you use Kisok 6, Kisok 6, this may be the last time Kisok 6 users may receive a lower price than the full version. So if you use Kisot 6, maybe this is the time for you to upgrade. Because maybe next year you are going to be forced to purchase a full license. I don't know. Now, the major features are that now Kisot supports RTX via DXR, the ray tracing DirectX libraries. And if a compatible card is detected, a new button will appear in the UI to enable this. Now it implements also render denoising based on Optics AI denoiser and they announced it like real cloth, but 
it's not clear what real cloth is. If it's just a cider or a fully fledged cloth simulation system, I don't know. Also, there is a possibility because you can you can check the video. I will put the, the link to this video in the video description. But there is a possibility to that they include a new 3D model library based on Keysot Cloud. But this is nothing official. This is just a guess. The price for, for of Keysot goes from $995 for the HD version to $1,995 for the Pro Edition and $3,995 for the Enterprise Edition, which includes Keysot Keysot XR and network rendering. Oh my gosh, it's so hard to 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 pronounce all those Keysot Keysot XR Keysot Keysot. Oh, let me drink a bit. Pandart, hi, thank you for the build with voxel particle remesser. Oh my pleasure. The work Scorpion eighty one is doing in the voxel remesser in Blender is it's amazing. So next, uh, very awesome news and I'm very happy and if you want to see like a first contact with this render engine, LuxCore Render, I will do a series about render engines available for Blender in this channel too. So, but the news today is that LuxCore Render 2.2 has been released and the new version, uh, it's the, the main feature, the biggest feature here is that it supports Blender 2.8. New features that are very important at Photon GI CAS system, yeah, you heard well, Photon GI CAS system, a new Albedo AUV, support for saving normal, geometry normal, position, material ID, UV, <coughs> object ID, material ID color, and Albedo AUVs to the bidirectional server, because LuxCore has several servers, LuxCore. Integration of Intel OpenImage Denoiser, and it also has the ability to blend brute force GI with the new Photon GI cache. And this is maybe the most interesting feature because theoretically with this feature, now it's possible to render caustics and cache here, uh, GI for faster render altogether while being able to decide if the target is more quality or more speed. So more features, but there are more features, but these are the most important ones. LuxCore is completely free and available to Blender 2.79 and 2.80 for Windows, Linux, and OS X, and as a standalone render engine too. So if you go here, you can check download, and that's it. You can download here the versions for Blender and the standalone versions here. <coughs> it can leverage CPU and GPU over OpenCL, so it's GPU agnostic. Next, and we finished this, this week 3D news. It's been a, like a short week, I don't know. Let's go with our final VR news. Because past week was a very interesting week regarding VR because we had Oculus Connect 6. And they announced very interesting things like Oculus Link and uh, the Oculus Quest hand tracking. And uh, in, in, in really, it was an Oculus Quest centric week. But now we have some other news. From then we have one news that is not related to Oculus. So we have Vive Cosmos wireless compatibility is going to ship soon, but it's going to require a new battery pack. This pack, that is the Cosmos compatibility pack, will cost $50 on top of the $300 the Vive wireless adapter costs. The new battery pack seems to be needed due to the inside tracking nature of the Vive Cosmos. I will put the link to this uh, sad, this this web page, the Upload VR, with all the article. Next, new Oculus Quest firmware for the October first. It adds three key things: adds pass-through plus, that is like the pass-through where you can see the real world in black and white. But now it's a perspective <coughs> perspective corrected version of the Quest pass-through. And later this year, Quest will receive pass-through on demand, so you can enable the pass-through whenever you want. Two clicks to the controller and you can enable the pass-through. Hello, Macandy. Hello, Sotomonte. Now, it also has a lights-out 3D mode, 
to disable tracking. This option can be enabled by the user or can be automatically enabled if the quest don't have enough light to track the space. And finally, the Oculus Go apps, uh, it's here. The Oculus Go apps compatibility, it's here. And now 50 Oculus Go apps are available to Quest users. I will put the link to this article too in the video description. And as a final news, we have some words from Mark Zuckerberg, Mark Zuckerberg, or Zuck, or whatever you want to call him. Zuckerberg says that Facebook is focused on non-invasive brain interfaces for VR. So you may know that there has been some evolution in neural interfaces for for creating like humans that can command computers with the with the mind but so far there has been some evolutions that require some uh, surgery but now Zuckerberg said that i think as part of ar and vr we'll end up having hand interfaces we'll end up having voice and i think we'll have a little bit of just direct brain but we are going for the non-invasive approach and actually it's kind of exciting how much progress we are making. So it seems they are making progress in non-invasive in non-invasive mind control and this is pretty cool. Later he joked and said we are more focused on, in fact I think completely focused on invasive, on non-invasive, sorry, on non-invasive. He said non-invasive. Why? Because we are trying to make AR and VR a big thing in the next five years to ten years. I don't know, you think Libra is hard to launch. Facebook wants to perform brain surgery. I don't want to see the congressional hearings on that one. So you can imagine. They just acquired C CTRL Labs. So they acquired a wristband for hand control and gestures. It's, it's a band that you can put here and with that it, it's able to interpret your hand gestures and your hand movements. So we'll see where all this goes. For the time being, I have to recognize that Facebook is the one making the most evolution in the VR uh, in the VR part because they they have created an amazing piece of, of headset that is the, the Oculus Quest and they have created it at low cost so for $149 it's, it's really low cost <clears throat> now to end I have a little gift for you I don't know if you know Cheers let me show you Cheers Cheers.com. So this is not a, a sponsor at all. Okay, they have not contacted me. I just want to help a family member, and she gave me a code for all of you to use and to get a 30% discount in any use of tears you do here. So in the video description, I will put the link. Or no, I, I won't put the link. I will put the code that you can use until the 16th, October 16th. So and that's it. This is, this is all for this week. So thanks for being here. Thanks for watching the news, even when I seem to not be able to speak English. And see you next week. Bye. By the way, I want to thank CG Press, CG Press. I, I forgot today, but I want to thank CG Press because they support us a lot. So please visit visit his website because there are some news that I, I have not told you here. You see, Lumion 10 teaser. It's just a video. Go there and check it. Bye.